Revelation 14, 6 through 7. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Revelation 4. Six through seven. Carissa, please recite for us Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Romans 5, 1 through 11. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Romans 5, 1 through 11. Which memory passage mentions the name of one of Joseph's sons? Elizabeth. Uh, Ruth, born 9 to 12. Matthew. Zechariah 9, 9 to 12. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. Matthew, please recite it. Zechariah 9, 9 to 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Zechariah 9, 9-12. All right, Matthew. Well, we got the results in for that. You got 100 points plus 400 for a perfect score. <laughs> oh, that was good. Please welcome Spencer, love it. Luke 19, verse 1 through 10. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, 
work Lord I give half of my goods to the poor and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation I restore fourfold and Jesus said to him today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost Luke 19 verse 1 through 10 Anna Chu. Proverbs 19, 16 through 17. He who keeps the commandment keeps his soul, but he who is careless of conduct will die. One who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his good deed. Proverbs 19, 16 through 17. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house, if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting and our hope. Hebrews 3, 1-6 Hebrews 3, 1-6 Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 through 19. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. Wow. That was beautiful. Grace Christian. Acts 6, 1 through 7. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Acts 6, 1 through 7. Welcome back, Abigail Rice. John 12, 20 through 26. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. 
Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. John 12, 20 through 26. Second Samuel 22, 2 through 4. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge. My Savior, thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Second Samuel 22, 2-4. Luke 7, 18 through 23. John's disciples told him about all these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Luke 7, 18 to 23. Please welcome out Paisley Joy Hawkins. Psalm 40, 4 through 10. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. 
Psalm 40, 4 through 10. I memorize and study the Bible because I love Jesus. I love the Bible because it is full of good news. It helps me to know more about God and to honor Him in all that I say, do, and think. I love learning about God's faithfulness and His love for us. My Creator manifests Himself to me through it. It will help me to think about God more and to do things that will please Him. It's a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. It helps me to know what to do whenever I'm in a tough situation. And it helps me know that God loves me. I want God's word to be written on my heart. The more and more I learn his word, the closer my relationship gets with Christ. It is his love letter to me. It is my life. Whenever I read it, I feel at peace. And it also comforts me in hard times and speaks to us in every situation. I memorize it so that I can be reminded of those truths when I need them at any time and in any place to edify others and share the hope of salvation. I memorize and study the Bible. Are you ready to recite the word of God? Yes. Here we go. Zach, please recite Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10. Psalm 34, 1 through 10. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. And delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him, there is no want. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. Psalm 34, 1 through 10. 